So how does that, how do we actually go about creating um, placing uh, places with personality? And this is where I'm going to draw in a lot of my own personal experience on this, um, as both a restaurateur and an urbanist. Um, we need to coach the locals, as I've put here. What do I mean by that? I mean we have to literally work with people. People who are leading places, people who are shaping places. If we're not actually engaging and coaching and giving the tools and the confidence and the motivation to people to be able to change their places, then we will simply not um, be able to achieve any um, transition, any kind of um, uh, change in our town centres and our urban areas. Um, this is an example I've been working in Newcastle under Lyme in Staffordshire. Um, and where you saw that market earlier with that rather sad chap walking past those rather sad night dresses and so on. Um, but a lot of what the issue was there was the fact that they had no confidence in themselves. They didn't know who they were. They didn't know who they are as a town, as a place. They did not understand that culture, the identity that they have. And by unlocking that sense of identity, by helping them, talking them through, we took, I mean, in the branding workshop, we were talking about brand values, brand ideas. Each town, essentially all we're talking about is what is your identity? What is your personality? So you have to unlock and articulate what a place personality is. And once you start to unlock that in a way with people, um, and Miller Research did a fantastic um, job on um, understanding the, the sort of the more retail um, and uh, food distinctiveness of the town centre, which really helped us to engage with local people, um, is that they start to become much more confident in what they're about. Um, and, and indeed, we, and, and here we're talking about um, the local food, which is fantastic here, is um, Staffordshire oat cakes. I don't know if you've come across Staffordshire oat cakes. Um, I know um, Nick has. Um, <laughs> But, you know, there's a whole Facebook, isn't there? There's a whole Facebook page, fan page, for Staffordshire Oatcakes. It has, how many was it? Thousands around the world. 12,000 members around the world on a Staffordshire Oatcake Facebook. Now, that is a, a really, really fantastic regional local um, product. And recently, um, with the, um, the borough council and the county council um, promoting shopping locally... Um, they actually undertook and established their own Staffordshire Oatcake Trail. They had a whole weekend um, of it. They, um, different restaurants around the town started to put on, had put on their own kind of recipes of Staffordshire Oatcakes, and it really engaged people. You see, because it was something that everybody, wherever their social, whatever their social class, whatever their background, whatever their interest or not interest in food was, they could engage with it. And let's remember, food is obviously so fundamental to our lives. Um, and there you go, there's the, the, the shop local scheme and, um, and farmer's market um, as well, which is in the area. The, um, the second thing, there are three, there are three things, just in case you're wondering if I'm going to go over time. Um, the is, is promoting what I call here urban theatre, is let's not be afraid to get um, our streets vibrant again. I was absolutely heartened to um, come across on the internet as I was researching this, that this year has been the first year, this month in fact, earlier this month, there was the first ever British Street Food Awards. I don't know if anyone knows about that, was involved in that. No, just one or two, yeah? Fantastic. And there's a guy, is it Richard Johnson, I think, who's, who's um, been promoting all this. He's a journalist. Um, fantastic idea. We've got to give people the confidence and say, yes, okay, they might only be, only be serving up fish and chips, but let's celebrate that. It's part of our culture. It's part of our identity. Let's not be afraid of that. Let's motivate people. So bringing street food back onto the streets, I think, is a terribly important thing in which we can do um, as urbanists and, and, and others 
um, in our towns and cities. Um, street markets, we've seen a huge um, decline in street markets, generally speaking, general markets. Um, obviously, we've seen f um, farmers' markets be created and specialist markets, but what about the general market, the market where you go and meet your local butcher, your local fishmonger, you interact, you don't just go to a checkout and say, oh, that's fine, and put your plasticised... Um, packaged fish with no head um, into your carrier bag and get in your um, Renault Espace and go home, you know? Um, I mean, come on, let's get some, let's get some energy, some passion. I, I'm sorry if I'm not being, you know, coming up with some great intellectual argument here because quite frankly, it just seems so simple to me is that we've got to, if we're really passionate about food, and I imagine that all of us here today are passionate about food, then let's not keep it to ourselves. Um, you know, our professional or foodie or wherever, whatever your background selves are, let's, let's get out there, let's be passionate with people and they will be passionate. Last year, I, we were, as we always are, involved in the Manchester Food and Drink Festival, somebody mentioned Manchester earlier, and they've done a fantastic job in engaging communities, local communities in East Manchester, um, which is one of the most deprived um, areas of, of, of the UK, engaged in the food festival, in the food and drink festival. So last year they had um, a whole um, day dedicated to community food um, at the festival and local people, um, there was, I went to see, I think it was a Ghanaian lady who was from um, the local area and, and she did a fantastic cooking demo about some really fantastic, authentic Ghanaian dish that you could easily make at home. And she went through how easy it was and cheap to buy at the local market and the, probably the market that was mentioned earlier that's been developed next to Tesco. Um, and it was absolutely fabulous. So, you know, there are, there are good things happening around the UK, but we've got to bring it out into the open a lot more. And the final thing, and, and I've already said it time and time again, <coughs> is to engage with consumers. We're doing it in our restaurant through um, our cookery classes that we, we put on on a regular basis. But there are numerous other ways in which we can engage with consumers. And quite frankly, if we don't engage with consumers, um, the, i.e. in the wider sphere, um, then we simply won't see um, that kind of... Um, transition to a more sophisticated, rounded, multi-dimensional food culture um, that we don't just see hidden away in a restaurant or hidden boxed into a big tin shed um, with blue, red and white light writing on the outside, um, but it's actually there everywhere. I mean, dare I say, dare I say, and, and uh, I'm going to be controversial here, um, but dare I say that actually the success of food festivals might be that we actually do ourselves out of business within 15 to 20 years because food festival and the theatre of food festivals, the engagements of food is happening on our streets, in our town centres, on our high streets, in our neighbourhoods, in our suburbs, every single day of the year. Um, that would be fantastic in my view. Um, Lad, there again. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> How can I resist? Um, finally, I just want to sum up. This I have on my laptop. This is my screensaver. Um, it's um, in my favourite hidden away cafe in Amsterdam, down some, I have to say, rather sleazy street. Um, but it's the gem. It's a hidden gem. Okay? And you go at the back, and there's this great big, nice big wooden you know, continental style communal table um, and I can just chill out and just get away from it all. Um, that's their homemade lemon curd and, and strawberry jam. There's something authentic about that. You know it's being created. We've, taught, we've heard about authenticity today. We need authenticity in everything we do. Um, don't try and put it on. Um, whether you're running a food festival, and we talked about brand earlier, and essentially what we were getting to was it's all about authenticity, it's about personality. So authenticity is crucial, um, communication is crucial. If we don't find the ways, we heard about social media earlier, if we're not engaging people in the way that they um, like to be engaged and we can engage them, then we won't 
get our message of um, fantastic food across. Simplicity, here we have just a simple mint tea. All it is is hot water with a few fresh mint leaves in, and it was absolutely delicious and very, very refreshing. And sometimes I think, and I've learned in being a consultant myself, um, is that you can come out with so many complicated phrases and jargons and reports and so on. I was with, met somebody recently who's involved in a town center in the Northwest, um, where they've created this fantastic, these consultants were brought in to do this amazing town center study. Um, about how it was going to be changed and transformed. And quite frankly, it just told them what they already knew anyway. <laughs> you know, simplicity. Keep it simple, you know? Don't be afraid to keep it simple. I've learned that. In, I'm telling you this because I've learned this in my restaurant. We have developed a restaurant um, at, in the drabbest part of the city centre in Manchester and we've been going for four years and it's become a real destination and people are very, very excited and enjoy coming there. And it's because we've managed to get, I think, that balance right and that personality and authenticity right. International, okay, I actually read an international newspaper very often because I like to engage with the wider world. Keep your perspective broad. Be open-minded. Don't be afraid to be challenged in, in your ideas, okay? Don't be afraid to do that. And, and I've learned that to our cost. You know, we get complaints from customers. And you go, oh, you go all defensive. And you have to learn to think, well, actually, that is an opportunity. We can be even better as a result of that. And finally, it's all about pleasure. I mean, for goodness sake, if we're not into food for pleasure, then we might as well just have it in a tablet form. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go um, there's some thoughts about um, place making through food culture um, and I'm quite happy to be challenged to be uh, asked any questions or any comments, additions you might have, thank you, I'm sorry if I've gone no that's fantastic Andy, thank you <clears throat>